So, double exposure hit the art scene as one of the hottest trends ever to exist, but then never really went away. They're quick, easy, and fun no matter what your skill level happens to be. So, let's take a look at how to do a super quick double exposure effect in Photoshop. Step 1. Choose two or more stock images. Now, when starting our double exposure effect, you'll need at least one portrait image and then one or more images that will merge with that portrait. Today, we'll be using a total of three images, one of a close-up portrait, one of some mountains, and one of a foggy forest. Next, let's extract our portrait image using select subject or whatever your preferred method might be. When extracting your image, no matter what method you choose, make sure to use layer mask. We will be using the subject's mask in future steps, so you want to make sure to use layer masks here. Now, once you're done extracting, create a white color fill layer right below your subject. If your portrait is already on a pure white background, then you can skip this step altogether. Step three, adjust that base portrait. With the subject's background masked out, we can do some basic layer adjusting just to prepare for the double exposure effect. First, let's go to image adjustment, hue saturation, and bring the saturation down to negative 100, and this will turn the image black and white. Next, we'll go into image adjustments levels and bring in the left and right toggles. And this will make the image darker as well as add uh, some contrast. Every image is going to be different. I suggest using smart objects or adjustment layers so that you can readjust your image's exposure if necessary. So don't worry about the exact settings too much. Just go by what looks right. Step 4. Align the secondary images. Create a new group right over your subject layer. Copy the layer mask from the subject onto that new group by holding Alt, dragging, and dropping the layer mask. We're going to place two environmental images into that group. First, a set of mountains. Don't worry about placement for now. Secondly, we're going to place a foggy forest. I flip the forest upside down and set the layer mode to lighten. So that it blends in with the mountains below it. Step 5. Adjust the secondary images. Now we can make some basic adjustments to our secondary images, starting with creating a black and white gradient map adjustment layer and placing that gradient map right above the mountains and forest layer, keeping it inside the group. Now, secondly, right above the gradient map layer, let's create a color balance adjustment layer, setting the settings to red, negative 11, green, negative 8, and blue, plus 14, just to add a slight tint of blue to our image. Finally, if needed, you can always adjust the contrast of your secondary images using brightness contrast. Step 6. Duplicate the main image. So let's duplicate the main image and bring it right above the group holding our environmental layers. I set the duplicate to screen. So now is when exposure comes into play. This is how to make a double exposure in Photoshop really work. Let's select the top subject layer and adjust its levels resulting in a very strong highlight and dark, dark shadows. Again, the settings will change from image to image, uh, with skin tone playing a significant part here. A lighter skin tones will likely have to be darkened, while the highlights in the darker skin tones might need to be brightened. We want the facial features to be distinct. Uh, that's our goal here. With our facial features set, we can now go back and refine our final composition by moving around our environmental images to match our subject's uh, facial features better. With double exposure effects, you want to try and line things up kind of creatively. Like here, I liked how the curve of the mountain matched the angle of the subject's brow. I also made sure the highlights of the mountain matched the highlights of the face. Step 8. Let's enhance those facial features. After finalizing the composition, we can enhance our facial features, making sure they are solid and stand out. So let's create two new layers. Uh, set the first layer to overlay and clip it into the upper subject layer, and use this layer to enhance the subject's highlights. 
paint whites on the areas you want to make more bright. And secondly, there's a layer set to soft light placed right below the upper subject layer, but above the environmental group. Use this layer to paint black on areas of the face you want to appear more solid, such as eyes, nose, and lips. I also enhance the eyebrows here. You can also use the black layer to hide any distracting details in the environmental layers. We'll finish our subject by just masking out any details on them that may be distracting. In this example in particular, a turning off the original base subject layer did result in a cleaner effect. With the double exposure, there's going to be a lot of experimenting and a lot of turning things on and off, darkening and brightening. Uh, but that's the fun of it. And finally, we can bring the image together with a quick color grade using a single curves adjustment. First, we're going to increase the contrast using what is uh, often called an S curve because it creates an S-like shape here. Then we're going to bring the blues up in the shadows while lowering the blues and the highlights, creating a blue and yellow duotone effect. Now, all color adjustments are completely optional and can be very easily changed to fit whatever uh, your image is. And that's how to do a double exposure in Photoshop. Once you have the basics down, try and switch things up. Uh, play with the exposures, layer modes, and layering multiple images over one another. Uh, there is more than one way to create a double exposure effect. In fact, there are probably thousands. And the more innovative you get, the better your results. Now, if this helped you out, uh, go ahead and give us a like, and if you want more tips, be sure to subscribe to Design Bombs. You can even turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. That's it for today. Happy designing!